first to die. Hello lovelies, I'm terrible at pimping my stuff, so here I am, pimping my stuff. Please like, subscribe, and most important of all, share, so that people can discover me and all the wonders that I offer. Hello lovelies, today we're going to talk about the Fallout RPG from Modiphius. Now, I was a sucker and shelled out for the big grand limited edition one that came in a GEC box and so on. Graphic here showing what was in it. Uh, but most people would have only got the normal edition. So I'm just giving you a quick look at some of the stuff from the limited edition. But the review will be for the normal edition. So you got a nice box, a nice big box which could hold a bunch of stuff, including dice and caps. Uh, you've got a nice sort of faux leather cover version of the book, but that's the only real difference is the cover. Maybe, maybe the paper quality is slightly better in, in this version than the normal book. Um, it comes with a little page marker tag, which is nice, though role-playing books generally would need about 10 of those. <laughs> But yeah, that was that was nice. The box was nice. It's a nice thing to own, even though it's just just cardboard, you know. Um, and you got some of the dice. I think you got two two copies, two dice sets, and uh, two sets. I think of the bottle caps, which are nice. And if you do uh, cosplay or anything, yeah, it's nice to have some some genuine Nuka Cola bottle caps. I guess. Uh, for your props and so on. We, we have a lot of uh, Fallout themed stuff in this house from the uh, from the various editions of the games and uh, and so on um, But I wasn't going to drag all that through to show you but yes you get some of the some of the dice Unfortunately, they use novelty dice you get a nice copy of the book. You get some additional Materials, let's get that out of the way Okay, so yeah, this is just just the main book with a folio of the cover and I think slightly better paper but I'm I might be might be imagining that you also got uh, a nice big map of the area the Commonwealth from Fallout 4 um, you got some rule summary cheat sheets to give to the players or to keep for yourself which is useful it's, an, it's a nice touch uh, some handouts on the weapon rules card versions of the caps for keeping track of action points and so on so you know that's nice um, the games masters toolkit is not massively useful <laughs> but it's uh, it's it's somewhat expanded options and so on so if you're unhappy with what's in the main book it's worth a look and some nice shiny character sheets on a on a tear out thing. I I don't know how useful that is anymore. Um, most people I play with have form fillable character sheets on their devices. Um, you, opinion is divided on whether devices at the table are a good idea, but there are dice rolling apps and character sheet apps and things for most games or at least form fillable PDF character sheets that you can have on your on your tablet or your laptop or your phone or your phablet. Um, so yeah, it, it's nice, but I I never end up using them. It always feels like a bit of a bit of a waste <laughs> to use them. And then uh, this, you've got an extra copy uh, uh, of the main rule book. So one's to go on the shelf, one's to use, <laughs> I suppose or ones for the GM and ones for the players to reference, but you got the cheat sheets. Uh, it's a Modiphius game, so you kind of know what you're getting um, when you get a Modiphius game. It's going to be using their 2D20 system, uh, but it's going to be some sort of iteration of that. If Dune is the most abstracted and least traditional incarnation of their 2d20 system then this is probably the most gritty and traditionalistic and technical and and fiddly 
version of their 2D20 system. Um, but there's only so much you can do with such a compressed grade of skills and abilities and so on. Now the history of Fallout as a as a tabletop RPG is kind of interesting in and of itself. When Fallout 1 and Fallout 2 were created, or at least when Fallout 1 was created, the idea was that it would lift the system from GURPS, of all things. Uh, GURPS is the generic universal role-playing system by Steve Jackson Games. And for a long time, GURPS, the system itself, wasn't hugely popular. Um, it gets very fiddly, there are lots of exceptions and so on. But they did produce books about settings and ideas that were hugely popular. You would take the resource books that were produced for GURPS and then you would port that into whatever your favourite system happened to be, rather than necessarily using GURPS. But it was it was one of the first sort of a, attempts at a universal role-playing system. So, you know, 2D20 is another attempt. The D20 system was another attempt. Uh, fifth edition D&D isn't so much a universal system, but it is open source slightly. So people do keep trying to cram games into that, which shouldn't necessarily be there. <laughs> but yeah, um, original Fallout was supposed to be done using GURPS. Um... Hang on, I'm getting some shine on the page. Which light is that coming from? Is that better? Yeah, that's better. Okay, now you should be able to see better. Um, so it was originally supposed to be done using the GURP system in a, in a computer game, as we'd had, you know, D&D computer games using the tabletop systems for D&D &D and, and so on. And I, I think there was a Traveller game by that point as well. Uh, it's been a very long time since I played it. Um, but for one reason or another, Steve Jackson Games had a falling out with the design studio, and as a result, um, they basically kind of kept the system, but came up with the special idea. So I'm sure Steve Jackson Games have been kicking themselves uh, ever since at that time. Um, there was a D20 attempt to make a Fallout RPG. Um, but they ended up uh, losing the license and it was put out under a more uh, generic father serial numbers off sort of thing. Uh, I don't think D20 particularly worked for Fallout. GURPS, depending on how you interpreted the rule system, could have worked. Uh, it worked well enough under its different name, special, uh, for Fallout in various degrees. Uh, but the kind of role-playing aspect, the the character creation, the the fine detail has kind of fallen away in Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 4, in a, in a sort of progression, um, and in Fallout 76, I guess, as well. So perhaps the... I don't want to say dumbing down, but I'm going to. Perhaps the dumbing down of the Fallout games has converged computer games, has converged with the more narrative focus in tabletop RPGs to to meet here um, for Modiphius's 2D20 version. Um, presentation is pretty nice. The print quality is good, but the paper feels a little thin for the quality of printing on it. It makes the book feel a bit fragile when you're leafing through. Um, which is a bit of a problem and it is quite shiny as, as you've seen it makes extensive use of concept art from the Fallout games um, particularly Fallout 4 which is good because it's actual art it's not like screen grabs or anything a lot of licensed properties kind of um, play it cheap um, play it cheap, I guess, by using grabs from the TV series or whatever. Yeah, there were a whole bunch of games back in the 90s, early 2000s that were property tie-ins. Somehow having photographs of stills from, like, I don't know, Buffy or Angel or Stargate just doesn't 
bring across the role playing feel in the way that art does. So I was glad to see that they were using uh, a lot of concept art. It's also cheaper, <laughs> I guess, if you strike a deal uh, with an IP owner to, to use their artwork um, to, to some or, or a large extent. Uh, so that yeah, the presentation wise, it's good. The writing is is fine. The layout is is fine. It's nice and nice and matter of fact and and relatively easy to read. Um, in terms of system, so it uses the two d twenty statistics and so on. Don't really carry across from any other game. They've used special to define your statistics. You have statistics. You have skills. You have perks, some of which don't really make sense in a role-playing context, some of which don't really make sense in the in the computer game context, but, but there you are. So you put your character together by choosing an origin. They could have done with more of those. Uh, choosing your statistics, choosing your skills, choosing a perk, getting some equipment, and then you're ready to go. How does the system work? Well, generally speaking, you can get one to five successes on anything that you try. As standard, you roll 2d20. If it's under your stat plus skill, it's a success. If it's a 1, it is uh, a critical success. Uh, if it's a 20, it's a failure with a complication. You can spend action points, which you get from succeeding very well on your skills, to, to boost the number of dice that you roll, and there are various other aspects uh, that allow you to boost the dice that you roll. If you tag a skill, you kind of that which kind of makes it your specialization. Um, then any role that's below your stat and skill, but also below your skill, uh, counts as two successes. A, a critical success counts as two successes as well. Then for damage dice, you roll d6s with a result varying from nothing to one damage to two damage to one damage plus special effect for for the weapon. So yeah, it uses novelty dice. With the D20s, not so much of an issue. With the D6s, a bit of an issue. Um, and super fucking annoying. You know I'm not a fan of novelty dice. It feels like a like a rip-off, a way of entrapping people into into using your particular your particular dice and kind of upselling people on that, not allowing them to use the, the normal dice that they have and you know dice get lost they go missing companies go bust and you can no longer get the dice and translating a normal d6 even via a table or something into the novelty dice takes extra time this is why i'm not especially chuffed with newer editions of things like legends of the five rings or um the the merp game that the that cubicle 7 did that used novelty dice i hate novelty dice stop using them <laughs> stop it so yeah, I mean that's that's how you define your character. That's the basics of how you roll. This is the most crunchy and technical, I would say, of Modiphius's two D twenty games. But as I as I intimated, there is a problem there in that you basically have a one to five spread, which makes it hard to statistically differentiate one weapon from another, one piece of equipment from another. You just don't have the granularity there to do it. In a, in a lot of ways, something like basic role-playing would have been better, something that uses a, a percentile system, but for, but Modiphius, for whatever reason, are almost entirely wedded to their 2D20 system and apply it to everything, even where it's not particularly applicable. I do think it is more applicable in the way that they've done it, in the way that they've modified it for Fallout, but for a lot of things, it's just not—it's just not really right. <laughs> it, it jars against the against the setting. Here, though, it largely works okay, apart from, you know, you want that deep customization, that improvisation, that um, use of junk and modification of materials and to have that have some sort of material effect within the game and because of the contracted spread of potential success and, and damage and so on you can't really you can't really do that um, damage is done to hit points which I'm not especially a fan of because it's so abstracted they help compensate for that a bit by having 
particular critical wounds do you know genuine lasting injuries to your character with effects so you can get into a bit of a death spiral but it's more about critical hits than just taking raw damage you'll find pretty much everything from fallout 4 and fallout 3 i guess uh in here that will seem familiar but the primary focus is there is definitely upon fallout 4 um all the the weapons and things that you're used to uh will appear here less so the named weapons though modifications are, are, are fairly deep it's just again you have that contracted that contracted scale of success and damage which means you can't reflect all of that so well unfortunately um power armor feels like something you shouldn't be able to get straight away but then you know fallout 4 went uh, went a different path of that i still not quite entirely sure what how the power armor is meant to work having read it several times you start with the frame and then you add parts and they're like adding hit points but yeah it's not entirely clear i need to i need to reread that a couple of times to make it click but it wasn't immediately it wasn't immediately obvious how you reflect damage to the suit rather than your yourself still yeah you'll, you'll find a lot here um it was a bit unfortunate i felt that there was so much focus on the commonwealth uh, and fallout 4 particularly the the synths and so on because depending how you played out that game one or other of these factions might might be destroyed and what what sort of headcanon are you gonna go with um some more guidelines about building your own areas creating your own uh, game zone and, and quests and so on would have been a, a bit more useful i think uh there are good loot tables and things uh but i would strongly suggest doing your, your loot ahead of time at least sketching out where people are likely to look and search and so on decent rules for scavenging um, they've gone into detail on the food and the drink and yeah, those sorts of aspects and, and so on there's a bit of a failure to recalibrate to tabletop from video games like something like a like a stim pack I mean, you might be popping those by the 100 in the computer game, but does it make sense for them to work in more of a tabletop scenario? And I'm not convinced that it does make sense for them to work in, a, in a, the way that they do in, in a tabletop scenario. Um, but that's the whole abstraction of hit points and things, which, yeah, I don't particularly like. Um, it is nice to see a lot of the art from the game in higher resolution and out on the page, like some of the magazine covers and things that you don't really get a good look at in the game. It's nice to see the concept art um, all around and it is quite immersive. It does kind of bring, bring out a sense of the world and of the game, though most people are going to be familiar with it from the computer game already so yeah that's that's not a bad thing at all um and it helps shortcut you know this is a world that has been around for years and multiple iterations of multiple games so it's nice that you don't have to do a lot of exposition and set up and make people aware of the world and the game though i think an in which would have been some some good sort of advice to have for the games master a good in is to have everyone from a vault yeah if your players aren't familiar with fallout you know you can say you know war came you took shelter uh, in this place or your ancestors did it's now x number of years later and you emerge out into into an unknown world and that way if a player doesn't know anything <laughs> about fallout somehow if they've been living under a rock or don't play computer games or whatever you know they can experience the novelty and the strangeness and the weirdness of the world directly 
uh, by by learning as they play. So that is a, a definitely a good good way to set things up. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of depth from the computer game, possibly even too much, uh, given the more narrative nature of the system, the more abstracted nature of the, of the system um, that Modiphius chooses to use. You can play a robot even if you want. Uh, I think only a Mr. Handy in the in the main book. But um, it's fairly obvious from the NPCs and so on how you could create a character of the other types. Um, there's some background stuff on the, on the people, the corporations and the powers from before the war, which, uh, which is nice. Some of it's a little too focused on the Commonwealth area. Might have been better to do generic advice for creating places and some talk about the particular big universal corporations like Robco and West Tech and so on, and then save the Commonwealth for a supplement. But for whatever reason, um, the, the focus is very much on the Commonwealth and Fallout 4 here. You've got decent information on Vault Tech, which is appropriate because, yeah, they're weird experiments and nefarious deeds and so on in the background. Um, more specific in-depth stuff on the Commonwealth, which, uh, as I said, feels like a a bit of a waste. Um, in a lot of ways, I would rather have seen this room used for more sort of generic advice for coming up with your own stuff, your own area, converting your own city into, into a Fallout domain. So let's skip through most of this. There's some quest ideas and stuff, which is nice. Um, random encounters, stuff like that. Uh, GM advice, it's okay. Uh, much of it, like in most games, is pretty generic. Some of it is more specific to Fallout. Uh, it's, it's useful in its own way, but again, I would like to see more I would like to have seen more of this and more stuff about setting up the world creating a world creating your own area your own version um, the bestiary again is pretty much focused on Fallout 4 and its DLC so unfortunately if you're into Fallout as a whole there's quite a lot of stuff that's missing that you might want to have incorporated uh, from your own, from your own experience, uh, from your own desires, and so on. But all the basics are at least here, and you've got some generic baddies in terms of uh, ghouls and wastelanders and, and random robots and so on. So yeah, th there's enough there. But I think in the computer game, you don't necessarily notice so much uh, the the relative lack of variety. Uh, in, in opponents that you face. In an RPG, I think you want more diversity um, in the kinds of forces that you're up against. You want some additional ideas, some new concepts, and you don't really, you don't really get that here. Um, there's a big focus on the synths, which, again, this is very limited to one particular area or one particular time so it doesn't necessarily feel like a, a, a good use of space um, in a generic starting book in a, in a main book um, you do have some variety of raiders and so on but again it would be better to have a standard template that you could then modify perhaps or simplified statistics some some way of um, some way of attacking it in, in, in that way to make it quicker and easier to pick something up and, and throw it at the players um, but that's true for a lot of games so I can't particularly I can't particularly attack Modiphius for that um, and then you get a sample scenario which is almost always in my opinion uh, a waste of space <laughs> in the main book the only real use for it is showing people how you think the game should be played and prepped for, and honestly, uh, an actual play record is, is probably a better option for that. 
Uh, we get a couple of appendices, the index, and the character sheet, and that is pretty much it. So, what do I think overall? In terms of style, the presentation is good. It uses concept art and some additional art uh, from the Fallout game development, which is a good way to go because it, it's actually art and not screenshots of computer models or, or whatever. Um, so that's a better approach that uses the resources that are available to you but isn't jarring in the context of a, of a tabletop role-playing game. The layout is functional. Um, I mean, Modiphius is basically a factory for putting out these kind of games now. Uh, so to a certain extent, they fall into that competent but genericized trap that <laughs> the D&D products do. Yeah, it's not exactly pushed the boat out or anything, and a lot of its presentation appeal comes from it, its parent IP, uh, Fallout. So even so, I can't particularly fault it, and it is a step above most sort of, sort of tie-in books. So in terms of style, I'm going to give it a four. In terms of substance, I mean, everything is there from the computer game. It does even the stuff that doesn't necessarily translate well. So you can't really fault it on substance and completeness, etc. It's just that it doesn't necessarily go together with the, with the system. Uh, but even so, I can't really fault it in terms of in terms of completeness, apart from those few niggling things, like like I said, the focus on the Commonwealth isn't so great. Um, the inclusion of the adventure is a bit of a waste of space. Some things are missing, like the more more generic advice, uh, or at least to the extent that I'd have liked it to be there. But even so, I can only mark it down to a four. So that's four out of four for style, four out of four for substance. That's eight out of ten, or four out of five. The deluxe edition, I don't, I don't feel ripped off, but I don't feel it was quite worth the money <laughs> I shelled out. Though it's nice to have two copies of the book and the handouts and so on. It's it's just nice. It's not essential. And novelty dice suck. But overall, recommendation from me. I think this is the most competent and complete version of the 2D20 rules that they've put out. They've managed to customize it sufficiently to Fallout to make me happy. It's not as abstracted and distanced from play as something like Dune is. And if you were going to buy a set of the 2D20 rules to customize for your own games, uh, your own ideas, um, you know, your own homebrew, then this would be the one that I would get because it is the most complete and the most technically competent. Zang. At the end of World War II, the Axis and the Allies went to war with A-bombs until nobody was left to fight. In this atomic wasteland, a new breed of rockabilly hero arises. From the gleaming domes of Science City Zero to the sleazy roller derbies of Vegas and the Sky Fortress of the Fourth Reich, there's a new world for the taking. 45. Psychobilly Retropocalypse. Available at lulu.com and RPG Now.